At what time did ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, sultry, harp, sackbut, <laughs> Hang on. Did you say sackbut? <laughs> right here! <laughs> it does say that. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image. That golden image. That golden image over there, it's been here for like 10 days. Oh, man, oh, that, that golden image. Oh. Is that what this music's all about? Yeah. Who's it about now? Just because some music's playing. It's Jammy! Yeah, and look, I guess most people are bowing down. It's working. But we're not going to bow. Ah, yes, the music is playing and everybody yes. is bowing down to my golden image. Yes, yes, the are. Oh, wait, wait. Yes. Look, over there in the in the, the section with the princes and governors. Yes, yes. There's, there's three guys still standing there. <laughs> who, who are they? Oh, I know who that is. It's, it's Hebrews. Uh, uh, Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael. Uh, I don't know a Hananiah and a Dariah and a Mishael. Uh, well, of course you don't. You uh, renamed them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why aren't they bowing? Oh, I'll teach you at my leash. Bring them to me. I shall. They are here, my leash. They are here. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I sent you word. You were supposed to bow when you heard the music. I'm going to give you one more chance. Oh, he's merciful. Let me talk. Hang on, we're gonna talk about this. Okay. Okay. We talked about it. Not happening, brother. We're not bowing. Fine then. To the furnace with you. Uh, uh that didn't go how I thought it would. I thought he was just bluffing. Ah! 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 <laughs> that that that's right. <laughs> now they'll learn that when. I say bow, you bow. I think we're okay. Too. Um, weren't they bound up when we threw them in? Yes, where are the ropes? They're walking around. How is this possible? Hey! The leopard doesn't have a spark on you. Well, you neither, man. It's yeah. actually quite comfortable in here. Yeah, toasty. One. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Huh. Did we put three in? Yes. One, two, who, three, four. Who was the fourth one? I don't oh! Who is that? Ah! 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 Who is that? You know what that is? That is the... Oh, oh wow. wow! Man, welcome to Junior Church. Ain't had a cliffhanger like that since I was literally hanging from a cliff. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was Brother Matt's movie he was gonna make. Reach up. Reach up, that's right. That's right, it is a cliffhanger. But good news, we are gonna find out who that person was, because today we are continuing our Old Testament books of the Bible series. Uh, what book of the Bible are we doing? We're doing Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. that's oh, right. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the book of Daniel. You know, Daniel is actually a prophet. What? Most people forget that. We think about lion's den and not eating the king's meat and getting tossed in the fiery furnace. Yeah. But the whole last half of that book, it's all prophecy. So that's why Daniel's in the book of the prophets, and so we'll or the books of the prophets. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. Hey, it's good to have Noah and Levi back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they're going to be here with us. They're back in school, so we don't get to see them as much. But it's good to have them here. They're going to be singing with us. And so uh, hey, you know what? Hmm? The suspense is killing me. Yeah, I'm about to lose it. Well, you know what we need to do? Yep. We need to get started right, right now. now. Welcome to music time. Glad you can make it. All right. Today we're going to sing about the whole world whole in the world. hands of the Lord. Hey, you know what? Huh. Well, don't want to give away the secret. Never mind. Oh. Huh. 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 I gave away the cliffhanger. Anyway, 
got the whole world in his hand. Hey, that's Let's, a song. It is. Yeah. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let's sing it. Right. Do you know that song, Noah? Yeah. All right, good. I'm going to need some help here, okay? Okay. Ready? A one, a two, a shoot a doo 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 He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Good job. All right, young people, it is Bible time. I've got my Bible, hopefully you've got yours, and today we're going to continue in our books of the Old Testament lessons, and as we do, we're going to come to another one of our prophets, and that prophet is a man that most people don't think about as a prophet, like I said in uh, the opening of Junior Church, and that's the man named Daniel. Uh, when we think of Daniel, we often think of Daniel in the lion's den, or we think about the lesson we're going to talk about today, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or maybe uh, we think about Nebuchadnezzar uh, getting uh, kind of uh, his mind turned him into kind of a beast or whatever we think about. But we forget that the second half of the book of Daniel is all prophecy and, and things like that. But the book of Daniel continues what we saw in Ezekiel, and that was things that happened while the children of Israel were in captivity. Remember, uh, Jeremiah uh, prophesied about the captivity, and then he talked about the children of Israel being carried away, and Ezekiel and Daniel were both prophets while they were away in captivity. And the Bible uh, starts off in Daniel chapter number 1. It says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And so the book of Daniel literally starts out with what Jeremiah said was going to happen. Here comes the king of Babylon, and he comes in, and during that time, just like every war, they took captives. They took people away, uh, and some of them were held captive there in Israel, but some of them were taken back to Babylon. And that's what we find out with people like Daniel and the, and the main characters of our lesson today, which are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananiah, Mishael, and, uh, Mishael and, and Azariah. Uh, they were taken back to Babylon because the Bible tells us again in chapter 1, about how uh, they were uh, they were part of the uh, the, the upper uh, uh, echelon of Israel. They were part of the family of the princes and, and things like that. And so they were taken back to Babylon uh, to be trained by the the Chaldeans. And so we we see that there. And then chapter number two, chapter number three here is where we're going to be today. Chapter number three where we learn a little bit about these guys that we know mainly as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible tells us in chapter 3, verse number 1, that's where we're going to start. We're going to read a few verses here. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof was six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, governors, and captains, the judges, treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar uh, the king had set up, they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald cried aloud to, the, uh, to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, 
that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye sh uh, fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship, uh, worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So we see here in these first seven verses, it kind of sets up what's going on for us. Again, these, uh, these men had been in, uh, in captivity for some time now. And uh, now uh, we read back in chapter number one because of some things, some stands that they took. Uh, they have been elevated. The king saw that they were uh, that there was something special about Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, and and so he put them in places of power. And we see that listed here: the princes and governors and captains and judges and all these officials. These men were part of those officials, and, and, and so the king brings them all together. And as they come together, uh, he, they're going to dedicate this, this image, this statue that he has made. Uh, it's about 90 feet high and about 9 feet wide, and he sets it up in the plain of Dura. And when he, they get here, there's a herald. He's a person who would speak for the king. He would announce the king's message. And he says, listen, here's the king's decree. When you hear the sound of music playing... The king wants you to bow down and worship this image, this big statue, this big uh, thing that he has there in the plain of Dura. And, and so most of these people, uh, you know, they're from different nations and different languages, the Bible says in verse number 4. Uh, and so a lot of these people are from different cultures and different places, uh, and they maybe worshipped different gods than, than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, some of them were probably just people who wanted to keep the king happy, and they're like, whatever the king tells me to do, I'm going to do it so I don't get in trouble. Uh, there's a lot of things that it could be, but Dan, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were Israelites. They were Jewish men, and they knew there was only one true God. And in verse number 7, it says that the, the music began to play, and all the people and all the nations and languages fell down and worshipped. But we find out in verse number 8 that not everybody worshipped. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a group of Chaldeans that come to the king, and they say, King, listen, uh, you know, live forever. They're trying to butter him up there. And he says, listen, you've made this decree that if you don't bow down... You're going to get cast in the fiery furnace. And the king says, yes. And he says, well, here's the thing, king. There were some Jews whom you've set over the affairs. This isn't just captives. These are, these are high-ranking people. And we hate to tell you, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Bible says in verse number 12, they said, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. He said, they, they, they don't care what you say. And you know what? They did not worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And you know what? That kind of made uh, King Nebuchadnezzar upset. The Bible says, uh, he, in his rage and fury, he commanded to bring Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Uh, and he says, so that the king gets upset. And he said, bring them to me. And so the Bible says they go and get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But knowing what he has already seen, even as upset as he is, he's already seen something special in these men. The king, he asked him, listen, guys, is it true? Did you not bow to the image? Uh, and they said, no, king, we, we didn't bow. And they said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one more chance. And in verse 15, now if you be ready at the time when you hear the sound of the cornet, he said, we're going to do it again. We're going to play the music again, and I will give you another opportunity to bow down. Listen, I like you guys. I'm pretty upset. Kind of made me mad. But hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be uh, merciful, and I am going to, to let you bow down. And the Bible says that, uh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego responded in verse number 16. It says, They answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. And so what they were saying is, Listen, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't, we don't even have to think about this. What you're asking us to do, we can't do. 
And in verse number 17 it says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Here's what they said. They said, King, we can't bow. Not going to happen. As Levi said, not going to happen, brother. It's not going to happen. And, and here's the thing. Here's what we believe about our God. And this is why we can't bow. We believe our God is so great, and He loves us so much, and He cares for us so much, that even if you throw us in that fire, He'll protect us. He said, He'll deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse number 18, though, shows even how much they trusted God. They said, But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They said, King, listen, even if God chooses not to save us, we're still not going to bow down because we trust Him and we're standing for Him. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury uh, and he, uh, he, he wrapped uh, these men up, he tied them up, and then he heated up the, the furnace seven times more than it normally was heated and he commanded his mightiest men to throw in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says these men were bound in their clothes and hosen and their hats and all their other garments. He said they threw everything in. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the fire furnace was exceeding the flame, slew the men that threw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in. The Bible says the flame was so hot that when these men opened the door to throw these guys in, those men died immediately. But not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As a matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says, was astonished. And he rose up and, and spake to his counselors. And he says in verse number 24, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He jumped up and he, he was rubbing his eyes and, and he starts looking at his guys and he says, Guys, didn't we cast three men? And they were all bound up, right? And they were like, Yes, king, that, that, that's what we did. And the Bible says, I see four men loose. He saw four men not only did he see four men, but he saw four men who were loose. They weren't even bound up anymore, and they were walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the Bible says that the fourth, or the form of the fourth, is like the Son of God. You see, whenever Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego went into that fire, they weren't alone. That there was a fourth man there with them. There was a fourth man standing with them because they cho chose to stand for God, and that was the Son of God. This is what we call a Christophany. It's an Old Testament appearance of Jesus Christ Himself. And He came, and He was there in the midst of the fire and protected and helped save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's the, that's the cliffhanger. That's the, it was the Son of God Himself. He was with them. The Bible says... This, that, that Jesus promised that He'd never leave us nor forsake us. As a matter of fact, when He left the earth, He told the disciples, Hey, listen, I have to go away, but I'm going to send a Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to come and to be with you. And no matter where we go or what we do, Jesus Christ and God, the Holy Spirit, they're with us no matter where we go. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, he said, You know what? Get those, get those guys out and bring them here. And when they brought them, they found out that not only were they loose, but their bodies had not been burnt, and their hairs had not been singed, and their cloaks had not changed, uh, nor was the smell of fire passed on them. The Bible says that not only were they not burnt, their hair wasn't even curled up uh, from being uh, in the heat, and, and not only that, their clothes were just fine. It's not like they were wearing fireproof suits and the suit, their clothes burned, but they didn't. Their clothes weren't burnt, and he said they didn't even have the smell of fire. Maybe you've been around a campfire. I, I like being around a campfire. One of my favorite things about being around a campfire is coming home and being able to smell that campfire on my clothes uh, after I left. The Bible says they didn't even smell like the fire. Nebuchadnezzar was so amazed that he says this. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's words, and yielded their bodies that it may not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Here's, here's our, 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 the application for our lesson today, young people. Here's what I want you to know. There's a lot of people in this world that say they love God. There's a lot of people that claim the name uh, of God. You, we see uh, athletes, man, they'll win a big game, and they'll just be like, hey, I want to thank God for helping me uh, to win this game. Or we'll see uh, uh, movie stars who, who are you used to. I don't know that you see them much anymore, uh, but they'll get up, and before they thank their 
their publicist and their, their family and their agent and, and the person who made the movie, they'll say, I mean, I just want to thank God and, and I want to thank this person and this person. And we see a lot of people who say, you know what? I, I claim the name uh, of God. Usually it's God. It's not even Jesus. But you know what? There's a lot of people that say that. But when they get pushed and they get pressed and, and how much do you really believe in God and, and do you really believe everything in the Bible, you know what they do? They do what the people in verse number 7 do. They bow down. They say, you know what, I, I, you know, I believe in God. You know, I don't believe in God, the Bible God. I believe that there is a God, or I believe in the big man upstairs. or I, I, you know, I don't believe everything that the Bible says, and, and I have my own thing that I do. And me and God, we have this. And they come and they begin to bow down to the pressure. Or, or they bow down, they give in. And they won't admit uh, that they, they, or they won't uh, say that they believe in the one true God. Young people, there's only one God, and that's the God of heaven. And His Son, Jesus Christ, there's only one Savior, and that was Jesus Christ. And there's only one Holy Spirit. There's not a bunch of other gods that we should be worshiping. And you know what? In this world today, it's getting more and more and more pressure and harder and harder and harder to stand for Christ. But can I tell you something? You know, the reason God left these accounts, these uh, historical accounts in His Word, is for us. Because here's what He wants us to know. Just like He was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Bible says, I am the Lord God, I change not. He's the same God that was there with Him that's here with us today. And you know what? We face a lot of pressure. A lot of people are telling us, hey, you know what? Uh, you don't really believe everything in that Bible. You don't really uh, you know, believe uh, what God says. You don't really try to serve Him, and you don't really try to, uh, to, to do what He says. Hey, you can come over here, and you can do this with us, and you can still be a Christian. And they want us to bow down to, to the worldly philosophies or the worldly ideas or, 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 or the, all these things that are going on around us. And can I tell you something, young people? Just like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, uh, we don't know where David or Daniel was during this time. I don't believe he was bowing down, but uh, he, the Bible doesn't tell us where he was. But you know what? The Bible says this in verse number 7. All the people, the nations, and the language fell down in worship. There, there's a lot of people around you that are going to turn their back on God. Those, those athletes and those musicians and, and those movie stars and all these people who say, oh yeah, I believe in God, when they really get pressed, they're going to bow down and, and they're going to bow to the things of this world and the philosophies of this world and the opinions of this world. And you know what? We're going to have to make a decision just like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. They decided that, listen, God's with me. God will protect me. He'll, he'll bring me out of the fire. Uh, if you try to hurt me or kill me, God will protect me. But if not, I, I want you to know and I want Him to know that I'm only going to worship Him. And young people, there are going to be people who try to get you to, to turn your back on God. To say you don't really believe what the Bible says. To, to say that, 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 that the Bible's not true or that you don't really believe. Uh, and you need to believe what we believe. Or we're, we're going to hurt you or we're going to try to do something bad to you. We're going to try to get people to talk bad about you. Or, or we're going to get people to not be your friends anymore. Can I tell you something? Jesus Christ is with you. Just like He was there in the fire. In verse number 25... He'll be with you. Young people, take a stand and stand with Christ. Don't give in to this world. Don't give in to the pressures of, uh, of, your, of people at school or, or people trying to tell you that what you believe is wrong. If you believe God's Word, then what you believe is truth. The Bible says, Thy Word is truth. Talking about God's Word. Right here is the truth. And if any man says anything contradictory to the Bible, they're wrong and the Bible's right. And you stand up for Christ even if it means somebody's going to get mad at you. The Bible says in multiple times uh, about Nebuchadnezzar that he was full of rage and full of fury, and he had these men through. He, he had them thrown in, and he even had it made hotter just to make it worse for them. But you know what? God stood with them, and God protected them. He sent his son to be right there with them and to save them. And you know what? Uh, he sent his son to save us and to give his life for us, and if we put our faith in him, we can trust in him. And you know what? From that point forward, He'll be with us. He's given His Holy Spirit to walk with us and talk with us and teach us and lead us and guide us, and He'll be right there with you just like He was. Take a stand. Be, be, be proud of your walk with Christ. Be proud of your relationship with Christ and stand for Him.
Congratulations! Whoa! Way to go. Thank you for sending in your answer. As always, that lets us know you are paying attention. Mm -hmm. I, saw Noah and Le I saw Noah and Levi's name on the, uh, the wheel there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So here we go. That means it's time for our favorite part <laughs> of every episode of Junior Church. It's time ready for Wet going to get up. lunch. Oh, no, that's not right. Sorry. Oh, that's sorry. my favorite time. That, yeah, it is. I going think my stomach's to growling. Get lunch. I think my belly's growling. Here we go. Let's At try again. I think, I think it's actually question, question of the week with Brother Tony. That's it. That's me. That's right. If you know the answer to this week's question, you can only be on the wheel two ways. One, if you text it in to our junior church text line at the bottom of the screen, it should be right there, like near Levi's belly, uh, at 717-739-6536. That's right, you can text it, uh, uh, and it'll go right to Brother Matt, and he will be able to put you on the wheel. And then also, the second way, so that's one way, second way is, if you're right here with us at 1030, you can come and be a part of this, and you already heard the lesson, you already know the story, and then there's a white slip that you can fill out, put it in our basket, and uh, make sure you put your name on. Brother Matt, mm -hmm. I didn't notice it until I watched Junior Church last week. I know what you're going to say. Did anybody see that Jerusalem was on the wheel? <laughs> Jerusalem, the whole city of Jerusalem had a chance of winning the prize last week. But you know what? I talked to Brother Matt, mm -hmm. and uh, here's what he told me. That happened. Do you know why that happened? Because somebody forgot to put their name on their paper. And he said it's happened multiple times. He said it's happened multiple times. And so he said finally he just put the name on the paper, or on the wheel, or the, the answer on the wheel. So put your name on your paper if you're here. Uh, we make it easy. We, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing about being Brother Matt. Hmm. We like when people win prizes. It's a true story, We bro. just give stuff away. We like doing that. Mm -hmm. And so we want you to win. Uh, so that's why we give you so many opportunities. But here is the question of the week. You ready? It was the cliffhanger. How could this not be the question of the week? Who was the fourth man? There was Shadrach, there was Meshach, there was Abednego, and there was, if you know it, send it in, and uh, you could be on the wheel, and maybe you could win the prize for next week. Speaking of next week, yeah, uh, we have some stuff coming up in junior church. Is it about your shack, my shack, and a bungalow? No, 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 no. No, we have some stuff happening. Uh, we have a big day coming, and we want to tell you all about that. So on Sunday...